Hey there, welcome back. This is part 7 of my WebDriver IO tutorial series. If you'd like to check out my previous videos in this series, make sure to click on the link below in the description. So far in our previous videos, we learned how to set up WebDriver IO, how to write our test and how to create assertions. And that was all great, but one of the things we haven't covered so far, which also happens to be one of the most popular interview question for test automation engineer is page object model. So what is page object model? So page object model is a design pattern that makes it easier for us to maintain our code and reduce code duplication. So it allows you to abstract any page related information away from your actual test. So put it simply, you know all the selectors we were using within our test, we can extract all that away and put it in a separate file which we can reuse whenever we want. So let's talk about why we need page object model. Well so far we only created two test files and wrote few tests in it which is not that hard to maintain. But in the real world scenario, you will be likely be creating tens or hundreds of test files that might contain thousands of tests, which will become extremely difficult to manage if you are not writing your tests in an optimized and structured way. For example, if your company decides to redesign one of the page of the website and update some of the element names, now your tests related to that page will likely fail and you will have to go test by test and update all your locators to fix your test. Instead, if you use page object model, you can access that particular page and just update your elements directly which makes your life much easy. Now let's talk about some of the advantages of page object model. Well one, it keeps your test and locators separately which makes our code clean and easy to understand and maintain. Second, our tests become short and optimized as we can reuse our page object methods. And third, our readability improves significantly which makes it easy for new team members to start writing tests by following our existing structure. Alright, so let's talk about how we can implement page object model with WebDriver IO. So I'm going to click on page object pattern here. You can find that under guides under the documentation. So there are no additional packages required to implement page object model. We can use JavaScript classes to implement page object model pattern. And with the help of classes, we can use inheritance between page object. We can load all of our elements in a single page. We can encapsulate methods and action. So we'll look at an example of each of these in our next video. So first thing we will do is create our base page class. This is where all our pages will inherit from. Then we will export an instance of this page object. From there we will create our page object for our actual spec file. In this scenario they are using login page as an example. So for our scenario it will we can call it search page. So there are few things to notice here. First they are importing this page. Second, they are creating this login page here which inherits this page class which we created earlier. And then they are using this getter and methods here. So before we were creating variables for our selectors, now we need to use this getter functions. Which can then be chained with our page object like this. So if you notice here, they are using this login page and then calling the username getter method. They can chain that together over here and then calling the command that we want. So in this scenario, they're setting a value for this particular username. Previously, we used to write it this way. So if you notice here, we used to create our variable and assign that a selector. From there, we used to call that variable and set the value to whatever we want. Now we can make it really nice and short in just one line like this. And it's really easy to read too. So moving to our methods here, we can create custom methods which can also be chained with our page objects. So if you notice, they are inheriting from the open method from the parent page class, which is over here. Lastly, you will be exporting this page into our test. So once exported, we can easily use them in our actual spec file, just like this. So we can use our import statement and just use this page object. So from there, we just need to use our getter and methods. And that's all. So if you notice, this is way more readable than the test we have. So our test now doesn't care about the selectors, it's just calling the page object and our pages are handling all the page related work. So in the next video, we will be converting all our existing test into page object design pattern. Also, if you want, you can follow this example and try to implement page object model on your own for the test we have created so far. And then you can compare your solution with mine in the next video. Alright, hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to give it a like and also please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already to see more content like this from me. That's it for this video folks, I will see you in the next one.